Hi, this is Brian with Profitless Media and Post. Today I wanted to do a quick video on some of my favorite tricks to solving problems with tracking in Synthize. The first tip I want to talk about is the camera spike removal. I did a video on this a few years ago, but it's a great tip if you ever run across this problem. If we take a look at this shot, you can see that we have a pretty decent camera solve until we get to frame 82, where everything jumps off at just one frame. Now there's several different approaches to how we can fix this, but one of my favorites and a very quick way to do it is to come over into the layout, go into camera graphs, and you can see here that we have our spike right there. And what we'll do is we'll turn off the solve velocity, turn on solve path. If you click on the triangle, you could open up the solve path. You can see all the different paths that we have keyframes for. If we look over here in the graph, you can see that we have, it looks like it's just the X, Y, and Z that have the bump in it. We, we can turn all the other ones off. So let's turn those off. And just focus on the X, Y, and Z keyframes. And come down here to the delete keyframes. And just drag a marquee right over the points to delete them. And now what's going to happen is where we deleted the keyframes are going to be interpolated between the keyframes on either side. So now we have a nice smooth camera path. So the second tip I want to talk about was working with grainy or noisy footage. Now if we take a look at this clip here and as we sc scrub through it, you can see how noisy the image is. Now there's a couple different ways you can approach it, but my favorite way to deal with this and works most of the time is just to blur the footage. And you can do that by coming up to the shot menu, going down to the image preparation, and adding a little blur. Sometimes one or two is enough. Two is what I usually go to. Press OK and then just let that render out. And you can see that that little bit of blur right there has knocked down the noise. That's a great way to approach the 3D tracking. If your results are kind of shaky, try blurring the footage first and then track on that blurred footage and see if you can get better results. So the last tip I want to talk about is something that I learned when I first started doing visual effects and still to this day use every once in a while. I typically use this in the situation where I have green or blue screen where there's no tracking markers and there's hardly any information, but you still need to be able to track the shot. And this technique can be used in any number of ways. That is to alter the image so that we have something to track. So in this example here, if we look at this, we've, we've tracked this footage, and it'll probably be fine. I mean, this may not be the best example, but you know we want to have some tracking markers here on the floor. And one of the ways that we can do that is by using uh, a planar tracker in something like Mocha, so we could do this in After Effects, we could do it in Fusion, which, whichever um, the software you have. But you can go in, and let's go take a look. If we go into After Effects, we're just going to use After Effects for this example. Is that we can set up some planar trackers. So let's go into Mocha. And if we select the planar trackers, you can see that I tracked this area and this area. I, I turn on the planar surface, and I made the planar surface for the whole entire ground. And then I took that over here into After Effects and added a checkerboard. So now we have this checkerboard that's going to be on the ground. And now we can render this out. And we can use all of these uh, checkers to track. So we can actually get points on the ground. So back in Synthize, what we can do is even though we've already started tracking our shot, we can come up here to the uh, Shot menu and come down to Change Shot Images. Click on Change Shot Images, and then click on the Other. Don't do anything special. You find your footage. You open that up. As long as it's exactly the same frame range, everything can stay the same. Press OK. And now we have a whole bunch of area that we can track. Now this is really useful, and I actually just did a job recently where this came in handy, where I had a green screen, and the entire shot was green screen, but I did have these wrinkles. And the planar tracker was able to track the wrinkles, and I was able to put checkerboards on the wrinkles and then track that to give me enough tracking points for a good solution. So those are just a few of my favorite little tricks. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again in, in another video.